Welcome back. Thanks for stopping in. In the first video, I introduced the notion that growing is a science, that you shouldn't just cast seeds to the wind and hope that nature takes its course and that you're going to have this bumper crop of tomatoes or bumper crop of cucumbers, just like you shouldn't just shove some seeds in some rock wool and hope the best will happen. Growing is a science. Scientists, by nature, are skeptics. Consequently, I was a skeptic too. So I'd like to start this video by showing some of the differences by the common growing media that you're using versus STG. You may have seen this before. You may have used this. Many of you probably still do. I have a feeling you all convert by the time it's over. This is STG. As far as durability is concerned, STG is superior to any other product on the market. If you watch this, you can see that the rock will just crumbles. I take the STG, fluff it up, it's pillow stuffing. Good as new. What does this mean for you as a grower? How is it going to impact your performance? I'm going to tell you. Anyone that grows with an aerojet, microjet, anyone that has a pump or an emitter in their system, this fiber will eventually end up in your reservoir. Consequently, it will eventually end up in your pump and therefore end up in your emitters. What do you think Rockwell is made of? It's SiO2, it's silica, hardness of six. It'll destroy your pump through time. And your emitters, they'll become clogged and your plants will eventually die. Imagine going on a four-day vacation and coming back and all your plants are dead. You don't have to worry about that with sure to grow. No fiber shed. As far as the e environmental footprint is concerned, I think this says it all. Look at sure to grow. 95% airspace. It's gone. As far as Rockwell, still there. I know some of you out there don't believe a lot in the negative side effects of having algae growth on your cubes. And I really don't understand that logic at all, given the fact that algae is one of the most primitive plants on the planet. It's been around, I don't know, four billion years. But algae, like any other plant on this planet, needs a nutrient to grow. If your cube is growing algae, your plants are being robbed. The thousands of dollars that you spend a year, possibly more, a nutrient going to algae, which you're never going to harvest, seems absolutely ludicrous to me. The beauty of STG versus Rockwell is little to no algae growth. And because there's little to no algae growth, the money that you spend on that nutrient is actually going to the plants. Another difference between Rockwell and STG is the fact that, look at this, beautiful, stark, white, clean, but more importantly, the functional aspect of it versus rock wool is that when I place a seed in here, I can actually see it. And if I want to look at the root mass, it's readily, easily identifiable. Unlike in this model green, I don't know what this is. But the most important characteristic that separates rock wool from STG is the fact that this is wicking and this is non-wicking. And at first approximation, you might think that that's a bad thing, but I assure you, it's not. It allows the plant's root zone to be flushed every time the cycle kicks on, whether it's in an NFT system being constantly refreshed or in an ebb and flood and it's to be on a timer being refreshed. The problem is with rock wool is it tends to hold on to stale and stagnant nutrient. This is getting fresh every time. So as I just mentioned, the largest difference between rock wool and STG is the fact that rock wool is a wicking media while STG is a non-wicking media. This is going to dramatically change the way you look and the way you treat your plants and how you set the plants up from the beginning. Because we all know, as growers, that seeding and germination is the most important time of growing. It's when a plant can or cannot be stunted for its entire growth. If you look at an STG cube, it is dramatically different than a Rockwell cube. There's a lot more void space in here, a lot more interstices. It's just a fancy pants term for holes. And each one of those holes is going to hold nutrient, it's going to hold water. But what's different about it is, if I pick this cube up, the amount of water that comes out of it is tremendous, comparatively speaking to, say, rock wool. And as you noticed, this product wets instantaneously. As I mentioned in the first video, you don't have to wait 30 minutes. You don't have to add conditioner to this. This product is pH neutral. It's sterile, and you don't have to let it sit and wait for those small, tiny spaces to suck up all that nutrient. These are huge, gaping voids, plenty of nutrient for your plant. So ask yourself, what's the bottom line? Uh, the bottom line is this. Don't wait another day to experience the advantages of STG. 
It's exceedingly durable, especially compared to all the other media out there. It's inert, it's pH neutral, and it's sterile. It's easy to clean up. You're not going to find yourself itching or scrubbing or sweeping at the end of the day. There's no real fiber shed. It retains 30 to 50 times its weight in water, yet it's non-wicking. This allows the plant to have a tremendous amount of oxygenation in the root zone and a dramatically decreased amount of pythium. It's system friendly. It can be designed for whatever system you're using, whether you're using beto buckets, whether you're using um, top drip, whether you're using an NFT system, whether you're using a flood table. It's going to work for every application you have. It has a minimum environmental impact. You can feel good about using this product. There's so many pathways that it can be disposed of. It can be cleanly incinerated. It can be recycled. Finally, it's made in the USA. You can also feel good about helping this economy here. Why? You're going to buy media anyways. Why would you buy it anywhere else but in the U.S.?